Good morning, everybody. It's so good to be able to welcome you to the fireside. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Ian Fall, and it's my great privilege to be the outreach and training officer uh, for Flame International. So for everybody who is gathered here uh, in person and for everybody who is going to be watching this sometime later online, you are most welcome. We are really thrilled at what God is doing in and through the fireside. I just want to give uh, a few notices, as is the want of any uh, sort of like Christian thing that we do. Uh, first of all, we are so glad that our, our latest copy of Burning Issues is available. So if you don't yet get Burning Issues, then please, would you register for it? Uh, you can uh, find our email at uh, fireside at flameinternational.org and that link will be coming up in the chat for those of you who don't know it but please really sign up um we're so um what, what's the word i'm looking for this is real meat that's coming through now and we know that god is using it all across this country and people are giving these away as well so please sign up for burning issues if you're currently on our call and you've not yet gone through the registration process, again, may I encourage you to do that at that same uh, email address. And we'd love to have you to sign up so that we can just keep you in touch with all that's going on. It also helps us to be able to let you know of the other things that are taking place. For instance, on Tuesday evenings, it started last week and will carry on for the next two. Tristan has been leading us in a really great bespoke course. This coming Tuesday at 6.30, he'll be speaking on the cross and next week looking at the resurrection. So can I encourage you to sign up for that? It's, it starts at 6.30 and uh, it's just such a great blessed time. We're learning so much through what Tristan is doing. So please uh, sign up for that. The next fireside will be on the uh, 15th of April and we would encourage you to sign up that, for that. We're going to be looking at God's uh, restoring and healing in regards to our emotions. I'd also like to point out that uh, on the uh, the 6th to the 8th of April, uh, there's going to be a recce out to Erbil in Kyrgyzstan, uh, sorry, Kurdistan, uh, and that's going to be Jan and uh, Richard Merrion are going to be going out. So please, we would value your prayers for that as they go out to do a recce in that, in that, in that area with the potential to actually going out and reaching uh, the, the Yazidi people, because obviously they've gone through tremendous upheaval and trauma. And we want to really see if the Lord is leading us to be able to minister into those places as well. So it's my great pleasure now to be able to hand over to Tristan, who's going to lead us in our devotion uh, on repentance uh, to faith. So Tristan, over to you. Thanks, and Thank you. Uh, it's good to see everyone this morning. Good morning. Um, and yeah, we are continuing with our foundation series. So uh, we're going to start off today's session by looking at repentance to faith. And when we look at Hebrews chapter six, verses one to two, we're given the six foundational teachings of the faith. And, and though we're encouraged to move on beyond the foundations in our Christian lives in order to come to that place of perfection in Christ, it's important to ensure that the foundations of our faith are solidly and correctly built and maintained. Because as Jesus warns us, when a storm comes and strikes the house to which has weak foundations, or perhaps foundations that haven't been maintained well, all that has been built on those weak foundations will collapse under the pressure of the storm. And Jesus goes on to teach us that it is in hearing and obeying his word and command that we build these solid foundations. And the first underlying word and command of Jesus is in his preaching is to repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so looking at Hebrews um, chapter six, the, the six foundational teachings of the faith that we're given are these. There's repentance from dead works. There's faith in God, baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And actually, you can see that these are in a chronological order. 
of the of the Christian life. You, you enter the Christian life through repentance and faith are baptized, there's the laying on of hands, there's the resurrection of the dead, and then finally, there's eternal judgment. But the first of these, and therefore the underlying foundational teaching, to the foundational teachings, is repentance. So what is repentance? In its simplest form, it means to change one's mind and to turn around. And with that, there are two elements to it. The inward decision to change our mind, and then the outward action of that decision. And in Acts 26, verse 20, Paul writes, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Now, when, when, when I say the word repent, repent, I think you'll agree with me that there can often be some different feelings associated with that word, with that command. For some in one extreme, it could feel like a condemning, cruel, or even harsh thing that has been forced as a heavy and religious burden on us to do. It could seem unloving or unwelcoming. And the idea that we are to repent could seem intrusive or old fashioned. We might want to skip past repentance quickly or not give it its due attention. We might even lean towards preferring to jump straight to faith. Just believe and be saved. Lacking the repentance. But for others, repentance can feel like the light and life-giving fragrance of deeper intimacy with God. And the joy that as we're moved to repentance by God's spirit, it's that wonderful confirmation that God our Father is committed to conform us to the image of his Son desiring to sanctify us through and through, that our whole spirit, soul, and body will be blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The contrast is enormous. On one hand, it could seem a heavy and burdensome command, and on the other, a life-giving joy to be grasped with all our might. And so I think the first point I'd like to share is of its importance. Repentance itself is a seriously important matter, not to be put aside or ignored, and we should not undermine it any lower to that which it is, which is a command from God. As I said earlier, Jesus' first command in his preaching was exactly that, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And we learn something more of God's relationship with the human race in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31, where it's recorded that Paul preached saying, in the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed, which is Jesus Christ. So there's a very real and serious relevance to repentance because it's the very thing that brings us out from Satan's domain and into God's kingdom. There's no salvation without it. And for, for the believer, it's important as we become more like Christ in our Christian walk, we're being sanctified. We're to make every effort to put off our sinful nature, removing the carnal mind, and we're to be seeking holy living and having the mind of Christ. That's repentance. But although, although the seriousness of repentance is evident, repentance, I don't think, should be seen like a spiritual paranoia. It's instead the exercise of one who has a holy fear of God and a deep desire for great intimacy with him. Because it's through repentance and then faith 
in which we move forward in God. Bob Sword, in his book, Secrets of the Secret Place, writes, here's some excellent counsel. Become a good repenter. The devout is constantly testing himself for spiritual fervor, alertness, faithfulness, purity, love, obedience, and growth in grace. Beloved, he writes, I pray you might gain the secret of radical, rapid repentance. Ready repentance opens the channels for intimate communion with God. So with that in mind, we should surely seek that excellent counsel. Become a good repenter. Not having any sense of heaviness and burden about it, but in fact, freedom and healing. Through repentance, we can be set free from the heavy burdens and pains in our lives. So what could repentance look like for us this morning? Perhaps an inward decision to agree with the Bible, even though we may not fully understand it. Perhaps we might recognize we are believing in a lie about ourselves or others, and it's the choice to change our mind on the matter. Or perhaps it's the choice to forgive someone who has hurt us because forgiveness itself is an act of repentance. Whatever it could look like for us, let's remember that when there is true repentance of the things God's word is revealing to us, we experience the pleasure of the Father in a very real way. So search us, God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in us and lead us in a way everlasting. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Tristan. That was remarkable. I love the idea of becoming a, a good repenter. That is a, an amazing way of, of putting it. And uh, I think that's just so, so, so for, to, for now, I think um, uh, I was at an event last week and just that, that, that narrative is coming back of calling people back, back to repentance is going across the nation. So that's a real word in season. So thank you so much for that. We're going to sort of, I'm going to hand over to, to Jan Ransom. Jan is known to uh, many of you. And Jan is going to lead us now. And there's going to be a time when we are going to be thinking about um, whether or not there's somebody that we need to, to forgive, whether or not there's something within us. And so I just want to sort of sow that seed before Jan speaks so that we are aware just that the Lord can be speaking to us. I'm going to pray and uh, then I'll, I'll hand, over, hand over to Jan. Lord, thank you that indeed that you have made it possible for us to come now and we pray that you would just bring to the surface holy spirit would you remind us of where we need to forgive lord thank you that that is a releasing thing and i pray now that your spirit would surround jan as she leads us as she speaks into our bodies into our souls and into our spirit anoint her heart and lips we pray in jesus name amen good morning hello thank you ian Thank you. Good morning. And um, I'm delighted to be speaking to you on one of Flame's foundational teachings on forgiveness, but on also on uh, bitter root judgment. And it's been a challenging week for me. I've taught this many times um, over the years, and I love teaching it. This week, I had a battle. I was in a battle to forgive. I was in a battle over what the Lord convicted me of. When you prepare using the word of God, the word of God convicts you. And I was in a battle about bitter root judgment. And that has been, and I'm delighted because 
I believe God got the victory at the end of it, but I had to be in a battle to do it. And uh, and yet I'm in the business of forgiveness. And yet still we come under attack because the enemy wants us to hold people in unforgiveness and he wants us to hold us in bitterness. And I believe today he wants to set us free from those things because forgiveness is a fundamental issue uh, of the Christian faith. And I believe that every human being needs to know uh, that they have th that they have been forgiven. It's uh, it's absolutely fundamental to our lives that we that we know that we are forgiven. However, we also have to forgive others. How many people do we know bear grudges? Even Christians can bear a grudge. Um, one of the sayings that I learned when I joined the army is I don't get mad, I get even. And do any of us still want to get even with people who have hurt us? Do we want to be proved right? Have we ever rehearsed conversations to have with people after an incident that you wish you'd said this or that? I occasionally have done that, I have to admit. And yet I'm committed to making sure I have clean hands and a pure heart, but I have to work at it. Um, and this week I, I worked hard to forgive at least two people. Um, and I had to ask one person if they would forgive me because I realized my reaction to them had not been godly. You know, one of the great truths about the gospel message is that Jesus died on the cross for us as individuals so that we might be forgiven for ourselves. Mark 10, 45 says, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. That was the first verse I ever learned when I became a Christian because it had my name in it. Um, but I'm, and I don't want to lighten this, but Jesus came to give his life as a ransom for all of us to in, or, in order that we are forgiven. And that's very important. But as I said, we are also called to forgive others. If we don't, we act as the judge and juror and we have no rights to be a judge. That has to be God. And in Deuteronomy 32, 35, it says it's it, God says it's mine to avenge. I will repay. You know, forgiveness is a command. Uh, let me read you Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. You know, when I was in the army and my commanding officer told me uh, to go uh, to um uh, go into London I would salute I'm not doing it very well in here and um I would and, and then I would turn to the right and I'd go to London when my heavenly father asked me to forgive I salute and I have to make a choice to forgive and it, it and it can be very difficult what is forgiveness it means surrendering to Jesus our right to hold a judgment against someone, letting God be the judge and jury. It does not in any way justify the sin or remove accountability from those who have hurt us. It does mean that we must act as if nothing has happened. It does not mean as that we must act as if nothing has happened to us. Someone who's been raped, forgiving the rapist does not mean that he didn't do it. It does not mean that she didn't, the lady didn't suffer pain. It does not mean that nothing happened. It just means that we're handing the judgment over to Jesus. Um, and, the, and so it's essential because if we cannot forgive, we find ourselves in prison bath. And I was praying with somebody um, from another nation on, on Friday. And I said to him, do you feel as if you're in a prison? And he said, yes, yes, I do. And then I could ask him to forgive. And then the prison bars broke. And, his, and I believe something happened in the heavenly realms in his life. 
And, you know, forgiveness is a process. And, and it may be an ongoing thing. It's like an onion. And I'm going to, some of you will have heard this story before, but this onion, um, it, there are layers of forgiveness. That's what I want to say. And um, I'm going to tell, it's a true story. About 22 or three years ago, we were ministering to a lady in Germany whose daughter had been sexually abused by a couple. And she was telling this story to us at, at the dinner table. And when I, I was outside, I said, would you, are you, could you choose to forgive your, uh, the, the, the people who've abused your daughter? She said, no, no, I, I can't. I said, could I pray with you that you would be willing to be willing to forgive? She said, yes, she could do that. So I did pray that she would be willing to be willing. And the first layer of that forgiveness had started. She listened to a talk not dissimilar to this. And that night we sat with her for our two hours at the end of the teaching saying, do you want to forgive the abusers of your daughter? And she said, yes. And you see, and there were many tears. And you know, when we peel an onion, um, there are tears and there were tears. And I believe the healing started then. I saw her about six months later and um, um, I, she said, oh, she said, I feel much better. She said, I choose to forgive every day. I choose to forgive. And uh, then I saw her a year later and I could see that the layers were coming. The layers, the layers were being removed and saw her a year later. So another six months later. And she said, oh, she said, now she said, I have no feelings for, for those people. I have no, uh, I don't want to do them any harm. I've released them to Jesus to be completely forgiven. And, um, and so she, so the, the work was complete. It took a year for that to be complete. Let me tell you though, what was interesting about that story is that she said that the moment she chose to forgive on that very first day, um, she said her daughter's behavior started to change. You see, her daughter was under uh, her spiritual authority and the daughter, her behavior became better as a result of her mother um, making choices. And we've been in contact with this lady who we, I haven't been in contact with for 20 plus years, but recently through a third party, I was in contact and apparently, um, she said that her daughter that we were that she had to choose to forgive these people about her daughter is now very happily married. And uh, as a result of her making a step to forgive, her husband was forgiven and her father in law was uh, chose to fit. No, the husband forgave and her father in law also chose to forgive. You see, when we do things in line with God's word. And in 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 and in the light of forgiveness, things happen in the heavenly realms. You know, forgiveness is a heart attitude. It comes from the law, but it is affected in the heart. And when we've forgiven someone, we we know it, we know it in every part of us. We know when we've completely forgiven somebody. I'm going to tell you my story on forgiveness, and as many of you will have heard this, but. Um, when I was in the army, um, I, 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 I obviously made a judgment against men in the army. I mean, this is 40 years, 40 years ago now, um, but this happened only, you know, well, uh, it happened after about 10 years after I'd been a Christian that I had this. And somebody said to me, Jan, do you, who wasn't in the army, he said, do you, do you dislike men? I said, no, I love them. I work with them all the time. I'm, I don't have a problem with men. He said, that's not what your attitude uh, uh, says to me. And I didn't like it when he challenged me, but I went away and thought about it. And I realized I'd say things like, oh, you're only a man. Or, oh, you're a man, it's your ego. And I would say 
which was like defensive, really. It was a defense, ungodly coping mechanism because I felt sidelined by men. They didn't, because I wasn't in the, I was a, a female in the army. I felt sidelined. I felt they didn't listen to me. And, and I was, I, I was, I, I just felt out of it. And I realized, and first of all, I had to repent of my ungodly attitude towards men. That was the first thing. The second thing, I had to forgive them. And it was like something came up and out of me. And for sure, that was a bitter root judgment, which I'll talk about a bit later on. But out came all this unforgiveness and bitterness. It had been like something in my gut that had been held there for, for years. And I was set free, completely set free. And of course, men still gave me a hard time. They still sidelined me. But, you know, that was OK because I, I wasn't harboring the bitterness anymore. And so I just, I, I just, and, but I also forgave. And they couldn't hurt me in the same way that they used to be able to hurt me because I was no whole, longer holding the judgment against them. And I had forgiven. So you see, forgiveness, it, it came out of my heart. In the end, I had to make a choice and then I forgave. And unless we release others, God will not release us from bondage, anger, bitterness, rage, hatred or, or, re or revenge. And, um, you know, uh, the, I'm going to tell you one story of a young man in Jordan who... Uh, he was he came from Iraq. He was a policeman, a warrant officer in the police in um, in I Iraq. And he was collaborating with the Americans and his friends who were um, from another religion said to him, if you, they didn't like him talking to the Americans, they said, if you don't if if, if you uh, don't stop doing this with uh, collaborating with the Americans, we will um, we will blow your car up. So they blew his car up. Then he didn't finish collaborating with the Americans. So they said, if you don't stop that, we'll burn your house down. So they burnt his house down. And then they said, if you don't do this, we'll shoot you. The next day, there, there was some outriders next to his car shooting bullets through the window. And this young man said, they're trying to kill me. And he left and he went to Jordan and he came to teaching like this. And he said, um, and he chose to forgive. And he, we, uh, when we're uh, in, in person, we have this, um, we, we have a cross and we nail discs into the cross and that's what he did. And it, he, uh, and he stood up the next day and told us that he'd forgiven those people who tried to kill him. But what was amazing is one of those young men came to Jordan um, a, few, uh, a, a few months later, um, completely when we were not there and God, the, the, one of the guys telephoned uh, this young man and said, um, and said, I'm in Jordan and I need help to get into hospital with my diabetes. So this young man took him to hospital. He served him in the hospital, cooked his food, looked after him in the hospital. This is the man that tried to assassinate him. And then he paid for him to have that hospital treatment. How he got that money, I'm not sure, because he was a refugee. But what I know is that when we really forgive people, we then, that is, that, that action of reconciliation that he took um, had to be prompted by the living God because God blesses us for that so you know Jesus on the cross forgave us and he didn't want to he did not wait for repentance but he forgave on the cross absolutely unconditionally he said father forgive them because they know not what they do and um, I was once asked I, I once asked a lady had she forgiven her husband and she said, no, it takes time to forgive. And she had had no time. And I think we have to take time to forgive. I think it's really important that we just, we, we actually spend time with Jesus and we know that we're forgiven in order that then we can know 
then we can be given help to forgive because it's not always easy to forgive people. And very often it's people quite close to us that we have to forgive and they possibly uh, have to, they possibly hurt you regularly. So that is an issue. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves and that can be hard because we've judged ourselves. You know, if we, but if we've repented of our sins, Jesus has forgiven us. And um, and I think we have to remember uh, that, that that if we can't forgive ourselves something that Jesus has forgiven us for, then that's sinful. And we need to say, sorry, Lord, I choose to forgive myself. I've seen some of the greatest healings when people choose to forgive themselves because they've held themselves in judgment. But Jesus forgave us on the cross by his blood we are redeemed and he's done what needs to be done at the cross um and so we need to forgive ourselves and we would never say forgive and forget how can you if you've been raped and have a baby how can you how can you forget that you can't forget that but you can be released from the pain and the judgment and the bitterness but you, we don't say, but what we would say is that if you've forgiven somebody for something awful, such as rape or, or, or constantly being submitted to anger and pain, we would say, put a godly boundary around you. Make sure you don't meet that person again. That is difficult sometimes when you live in the same house as them. But what I would say is that we need to forgive and where we can um, put godly boundaries in. Now, um, what I would say is that uh, when we heal, we can get physically healed. And now I heard a story of one lady. She hadn't spoken to her sister for about 20 years and she chose to forgive her. She put a letter to say she was forgiving her into the post box. As she put the letter in her the post box, her back was completely healed. Um, you know, holding on to unforgiveness is hard work as well, and it hurts, and yet it also hurts to forgive. To forgive. Forgiveness is, is a feeling, but it is also an action. It's an act of our will. And that lady who forgave her child, her little girl's abuser uh, or abusers, um, you know, it took her a long time, but she chose to forgive. And finally, it took months. So let's remember this isn't something um, it, that we, ca we can do. Um, sometimes it's something that takes time for us to do. Of course, the true test of forgiveness is whether you can... Uh, is whether you can pray blessing on that person's life. And sometimes it takes time to be able to do that. You know, and some of the symptoms of unforgiveness is, is your heart glad to see that person? Do you want fellowship with that person? Does somebody come into church on a Sunday and you think, oh, I don't really want to see her. I'll go on to the other side of the church. Um, and, um, and, and, and one really big problem can be forgiving people who have hurt people that you love. Sometimes when your mother, your daughter, your husband, your your wife has been hurt, it's harder to forgive the people uh, than it is if it was the pain and the hurt against being against you. And what do we get when we when we we get blessings when we have forgiven you get freedom you get emotional release you you are free from torment you're free from condemnation you're not controlled in the same way if i if we were on stage i, I would have had somebody push me and um i and I, we would have demonstrated that we can be controlled by people that hurt us when we don't forgive them because it's always in our mind we're always angry with them but we, when we forgive, we regain godly control over our lives. And, you know, we have to keep forgiving and we need to choose to forgive and where we can forgive and where we can again bless. And what I'd like to do now is to give you the opportunity to forgive. And it's an act of our will. 
and I'm going to ask you perhaps you may like to put this will take a couple of minutes you may like to put your um your videos off I don't mean take the whole uh, go away just if you just stop your video um and I pray and maybe you would like to just ask the Lord is there anybody that you need to forgive and is that and then is there and are you and ask the Lord to help you to forgive that person and I'm and as you make a choice, it might be through gritted teeth. You don't have to do it out loud, but you, it's sometimes helpful to say I choose to forgive. And sometimes you have to do it with gritted teeth, but it's the same. You're making a choice in your will. The Lord wants to set us free from unforgiveness and pain and bitterness. So I just pray now in the name of Jesus. If you join me in whatever, in any way you like, we just ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would touch each of us. And if we need to forgive, you give us the courage to do that in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just ask for the Holy Spirit to brood over each person on this call today and help them to make a choice to forgive. You might be in the process of forgiving somebody and you've already started that process. I pray that you can move on in that process this morning. Jesus. Lord, we just release these people into the freedom of my forgiveness and I hand them over to you to be judge and jury. I will no longer judge them. I leave them in the hands of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you would like to come back, if you can. Some people might be doing business and that's great. With If you're doing business with Jesus, that is, it's great. And uh, I'm just now going to move on to... Um, to do to talk about bitter root judgments and what is it what is a bitter root judgment it is what it says bitterness is something that's acrid that is not great a root is something that's gone deep deep down into our very innermost beings and a judgment is us judging uh, other people for their actions and it's sinful reactions. Uh, normally, a bitter judgment is a sinful reaction against others who have hurt us. You know, God wants us to have strong root systems and where we can draw on his nourishment and his nurture. And what is the root cause of some problems that people have today, like financial struggles? which may not just be because they handle money badly. Um, it may be um, anger. There may be uh, roots of fear, troubled relationships, insecurity, uh, health issues and addictions. Can there be a root cause or is there a root cause to many problems? Yes, and bitter roots can be one of the roots that is the cause of many roots, many roots of uh, defilement, of deception and depression. You see, if we're bitter deep inside of us, 
it can cause all sorts of issues within our lives. And um, um, so what is it? What is the fruit of a bitter root judgment? These can include unforgiveness, anger, bitterness, resentment, addictions like pornography, lust, immorality, hatred, envy, jealousy, just to name a few. These are some of the fruits. You see, when we're bitter, we can be angry. When, when, we're, when we're unforgiveness, we're often angry at the people. There's resentment. And actually what happens is other things come out which can have an, an effect on us. Let me read you Hebrews 12, 14 to 16. This is um, uh, uh, from the New Living Version. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. I just want to say that again. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many, making sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know, bitterness began in the Garden of Eden when Satan deceives Eve, Adam and Eve, tempting them to eat uh, from the tree of good and evil, which the Lord had forgiven, forbidden them to do. And in a way that caused them to be bitter towards God. In Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14, it says of Satan, How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You've been cast down to the earth, you who once said, I, low, I laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights, heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the top of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. That's what Satan did. He tried to make himself like the most high. And of course, he was kicked out of heaven as a result of his of wanting the worship that the Lord God had received. And that's where bitterness came in. And then he went and he tempted Adam and Eve. You see, Satan had bitterness towards God and wanted God's position. And he drove Adam and Eve to do the same thing. Bitter roots came from original sin. Uh, uh, you know, bitter roots came from original sin, and I would love to go into this deeper, but it demands a look, a look which I do not have time to give to today. But just in the Old Testament, do you remember there was bitterness between Jacob and Esau when he when Esau sold his birthright for some stew? That but there was bitterness between them. The bitterness grew uh, was uh, you know, Joseph was in enmity between his brothers who sold him to passing traders. And David's brothers also had envy and bitterness towards him. Uh, and, uh, and as I've been thinking about these brothers the last few days as I've been preparing, I suddenly thought about our, our dear royal family, who the brothers William and Harry, you know, it, that, that seemed to be in bitterness towards each other you know bitterness is deep rooted and it's in it's very debilitating in a relationship i'm not here to judge anybody i just feel sad and i pray 
uh, for the, the, the two royal brothers that they will come into forgiveness and reconciliation. You know, what about us? Do we have bitterness towards either God or others? Do we even after taking steps to forgive uh, say things when somebody says to you, oh, and you've forgiven somebody and you know they're forgiven. And then somebody will say to you, oh, isn't that girl? She's such a lovely girl. And inside you, and maybe this doesn't happen to you, but I have to say it's occasionally happened to me. I can think things like you don't really know what she's like. You have no understanding what she's done to me. And yet I've forgiven. And yet still I might have these thoughts. Where does that come from? It comes from a bitter root judgment. And I can tell you that I've done it. And I can also tell you that I have repented because I need to be holy. As Tristan was talking about earlier, I need to be holy before a holy God. And that's what, and that is important. And so I have to repent. I have to forgive again and repent of the for bitterness and forgive myself. And I've also in the past had to get rid of spirits of bitterness. And I tell them to go in the name of Jesus Christ when this happens to me. And I'm delivered of that. I've been delivered of a spirit of bitterness. That's what happened. When back there, in when I was in the army and I, I was challenged about, do I forgive men? I really thought I had. I really thought I had. And I hadn't. But when this bitterness came up, it was a deliverance of bitterness and unforgiveness. And it, that, that's what a bitter root judgment does. I had a, recent, a lady recently criticise me and then she chose to offer me some advice. Um. I had forgiven her for the criticism, but I wasn't very keen on the advice, frankly. Um, and I had to really dig deep and, and make sure she was forgiven and any bit bitterness had to be removed. Um, so I just, uh, I, I just say that all of us are vulnerable to these bitter root judgments. Um, and, now, but there can be, we can also make bitter root judgments. There can be national bitter root judgments. And um, when I was growing up as a nation, uh, the British didn't like the French very much and, um, and would have a negative attitude towards the French. And I think I had that in my spiritual DNA, to be honest, because nobody ever said anything bad about France to me. But, I, you know, I would be critical of the French. And I recognised it and I've repented of it now. And I try mostly to think of French wine, of skiing, of the good food, of the gorgeous countryside in France. So I, I mostly got rid of that. But, you know, there can be a tendency in this uh, in the in this country to be to there has been in the past. Maybe it's not there now, but there can be um, uh, a, a, a tendency to do that. Now, I'm, another testimony, I was mis ministering to a lady from an, uh, when I was working with another ministry. She was lovely. But when I heard where she was from and it wasn't France and I'm not going to tell you the country. But um, um, I believe bitterness rose in me because when I'd last been to her nation, I'd had a really, really difficult time. And um, I hadn't found it easy when I went there. And as I was ministering to her, I said, darling, do you, do you need to forgive something about something? And uh, she said, yes. And she, she chose, she, through gritted teeth, bless her, she chose to forgive. But as she forgave, uh, what was interesting, she had had a she had a very nasty cold and there was obviously something of infirmity on her and it passed to me. And obviously her spirit had picked up that my spirit had something against her nation. And um, so I got her cold immediately. I got a sore throat as she chose to forgive. 
and um, and it took six weeks for that to lift. But let me tell you, I needed to repent of that bitter root judgment against that nation. And I dealt with it. I, you, you know, sometimes you have to learn lessons, when, even when we're doing ministry. That was about 15 years ago. So um, I'm well through that now. Um, and just one more thing, and then I'm going to see if we can, if if the Lord wants to uh, set us free from all of us um, from bitter root judgments. But recently, we, we we've been invited to partner with another ministry in another particular nation, and initially, uh, I. I personally hardly prayed and I said no I thought oh no we're not called to that nation I'd always thought we weren't called to that nation the first time I went there it hadn't been particularly pleasant and I thought no we're not called here anyway um I so I said no and then two months later um I was praying and the, and I said Lord is there anything we're doing that is that could hinder our ministry that could hinder it stop it and uh the, uh, and the, the Lord immediately gave me the name of this country. And I then asked the Lord to speak. And three times within 24 hours, he gave me physical signs about the nation, um, and which I'd not had before. And we were also challenged that we are, are we prepared to go where we do not want to go? And that has been a challenge. Ah, oh, and I think that's a challenge anyway to me. Do, am I prepared to go? And that could be in this country. It could be anywhere. But was I prepared to? Were, were we prepared to go? That really spoke. And what I wanted, you, we are now in touch with the, the 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 ministry that asked us to go. And we and personally, I'm looking forward to going to that nation because I believe the Lord challenged me, and in that the memory of what happened. Um, uh, 20 years ago actually because uh, it was 2002 that we were in this place and um, uh, what the memory ha ha of being in that nation had had made had given me a bitter root and I had no idea that it was there until this happened recently so so what do we do when we to deal with a bitter root let me just tell you first of all ask the Lord if you have one and then ask him to reveal what is hidden to you. You know, the whole business with this last nation um, that I was talking about, I had no, I had no understanding because it had been hidden for so long. Um, and I repented of specific judgments made against that nation. You know, in I I just wonder if um in this country we may have to forgive the government for things. We may need to forgive the national health. My experience of the national health personally has been amazing, but I haven't had to use it for several years. But sometimes people have been hurt by the, the NHS. They may have been hurt by an organization. Some people may have been hurt by Flame International. We wouldn't deliberately do that, but it can happen. And so we need to re repent of specific judgments. We need to forgive those who have hurt us and caused us to make these judgments and bring them to the foot of the cross. Jesus is the judge. Jesus is the, ju you know, he is the judge and jury. And, he, you know, we say in the creed, don't we, that he comes to judge the quick and the dead and, Lord, I, I believe that he, want, he wants to, he is the judge of people and we can hand our judgment over to him. And you may need to ask the Lord for deliverance and just to break any bitter root judgment within you and name any resentment and bitterness that you have. And then ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. I wonder if we again could just spend a little bit of time with the Lord Jesus. Um, it, you can put your, your videos off, or they may still be off, but you may like to just spend about five minutes now, um, just um, before we go into breakout groups. And um, so, um, 
yeah so if you'd like to do that and then i'm going to pray at the very end not before the breakout groups i will pray I wonder if we have done business with the Lord. I would just love to pray with you if that's okay. Um, maybe you it would be good if you, you could um, come back into the, the meeting and put your videos on because we'll go into breakout rooms immediately after this. And then uh, if, you, if you've done the business, if you're continuing to do business with Jesus, then that's fine. You stay behind your videos and do the business. Much more interested in that than listening to me. So, Lord Jesus, I, I just thank you that you are the one who brings healing to us. Lord, and I pray that where bitter root judgments have been broken today, where forgiveness has been enacted, and where bitterness has been uh, dealt with. Lord, I pray that you would fill each of us with the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you're the one. Would you seal in by the, with the Holy Spirit the work that we have done as individuals this morning? And Lord, I just ask that you would supernaturally continue to help people to identify if they have got bitterness in their lives, if they've got unforgiveness. And Lord Jesus, you'd point it out to us. I, I don't exclude myself in this. I just ask Jesus that you would, in each of us, help us to recognise um, where there's unforgiveness, where there's bitterness. And Lord Jesus, would you release us 
into the freedom of your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for us. Thank you that you took our sin and we get your righteousness. Thank you that we pass from curse to blessing at the, when you died on the cross. Thank you, Lord, that your blood cleanses us from all sin. And today we just pray in the name of Jesus that your glory would be revealed in our lives. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. It's such a great, incredible reminder about what, what the Lord does in that. And uh, I mean, we're just so, so blessed to have had this teaching today. And let's remember that, that part of this is actually this is the process of forgiveness. And the Lord brings those things to the surface that he only wants to release us from and the pain that that has caused us to a large extent, but also to see his blessing at work in us. And I just really want to say thank you, Jan, for for leading us and taking us into that place for the reminders actually that I needed to do uh, and the things that it's going to actually uh, encourage me to do as well. So thank you, everybody, for joining again. Please uh, sign up uh, if you haven't already. The link was in the chat. Um, and. Uh, don't forget that our next one is on the 15th of, of April. We would love you to be able to encourage friends, family, uh, members of church uh, to be able to sign up as well and to be able to just get this teaching. We know that the Lord is doing a great work here. So thank you uh, for that. Um, let me just pray and then we'll, 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 we will release you. Lord, we just want to say thank you that on the cross you achieve for us complete and total forgiveness there is nothing excluded nothing missed out nothing laid to one side nothing that you call us to bear on our own lord you have done it all and thank you for that complete healing that you bring and over these days help us lord just to understand as you bring to the surface those things that we need to release that we need to forgive that lord including ourselves that lord we would do just that and know your strength and power in jesus name amen